Hello, welcome to Curiosity, the science show. This is August episode, episode number 22. So let us see what really moved the sciences in the last month, that is in July 2021. So uh, I've been busy lately with writing a book and the book title, do you know what? Yes, can you guess it? It's Curiosity. So the book is about soft skills and critical thinking. So you can expect the book maybe in uh, uh, next four or five months. Uh, it's I'm in the midway through. Okay. So yes, curiosity is really important for soft skills, right? It, it improves your communication skills. It improves the decision making. It improves your leadership skills too, isn't it? So it actually uh, lights up everything, even your critical thinking, how to think better if you apply a little bit of curiosity. So that exactly is what I'm covering in this book. Right. And if you're a publisher, you're uh, ready to approach me. You can email me if you're interested to publish this book. Right. So this show is uh, let us actually see what really moved the science and around the world, the science based thinking right in the last month. So, of course, Olympics, sports, right. It's a curiosity driven, though it is not really science, but science matters a lot. Right. So, yes. So Olympics also uh, two gold medal went to scientists, right? Anna Kissenhofer, she's a mathematics postdoc uh, fellow at uh, Ecole Polytechnique in Paris, uh, France. She won the, the gold in cycling, my favorite sports, you know. And also I'm really happy with uh, Charlotte Him, and uh, she's, uh, you know, she's PhD in neuroscience, cognitive neuroscience from Paris. You know, and uh, she also got a gold medal in skateboarding, the counterintuitive, counterculture uh, game. I also love skateboarding and skate scooter rather, right? And yeah, so uh, it's a it's a great news for science as a whole, isn't it? So by the way, I don't know how many of you realize the gold medal in the, the Tokyo Olympics is actually from recycled smartphone and other electronic gadgets. So it is. Uh, it actually integrates very well with the Japanese concept of triple R, RRR, that is a reduce, recycle, and uh, a repurpose, isn't it? So that three R's are really, really important, no? recycle, and of course, uh, you know, the recycling of the e-gadget and e-waste, the digital waste is, uh, that actually shows a very strong message to the rest of the world that we you know, we should not pollute. Sustainability is the key message that is related. That each gold coin is, uh, it's from the smartphone. If you throw out the smartphone, you can recycle it. It do contain a lot of rare earth minerals and metals, you know. Great, isn't it? So uh, this month onwards, I'm just changing a little bit. I'm in, including a, a one, a, a, you know, a new concept. What did I learn in the last month? That is something called TMIL. This month I learned only five stories. So the first story I learned in the last month, apart from the gold in the Tokyo Olympics is the Norway. Norway, the country, you know, it's one of the top in the world in terms of human development index. They hire the Sherpas from Nepal, uh, you know, to build the paths in the Norwegian mountains. Fantastic, isn't it? And they completed over such 300 projects in the hiking trails in the Norwegian forests. And do you know how much they pay? They pay one whole summer equals approximately 30 years of work in the Nepal. That, that's great. They're earning a lot of money. 30 years of their lifetime work they're earning in just one summer in Norway, isn't it? So that Norway is also a very interesting country that they have a lot of petroleum, but they don't touch it. You know, that is part of the sovereign wealth fund, the, the world's largest. So they discovered this petroleum almost 40 years back, but they knew that one day the world will completely exhaust the supply of petrol, the fossil fuel. And they're waiting for that day to, to trap this uh, wealth. You see that they are not mining at all. Fantastic, isn't it? The third uh, TMIL story is that uh, while only 9.7% of the Americans don't wear the seat belts in the car, 47% of those who die in the car crash do not wear the seat belt. So that asymmetry is really, really stalking. Those who are not wearing the seat belts are almost half of the death is attributed to the uh, not wearing seat belt. You know, so wearing seat belt is extremely important. And of course, if you are uh, into the motorcycle, I don't have a car. I travel usually by motorcycle or my, by my cycle. And I do wear helmet. 
So if you look at that, the death by motorcycle or cyclists, I would say, uh, you know, a, a big majority is those who are not wearing helmets. So it's really important. So as wearing mask, right? And uh, coming to the mask, I learned in the last month that, uh, you know, the airplane, if you ever travel in flight, there are actually masks, right? That actually falls down whenever the oxygen level decreases inside the flight. By the way, flight is nothing but a, a metal cylinder with a lot of pressure in it, right? If you think it that way. And how does it work? How does it generate the oxygen? You know, do they have oxygen cylinders inside the aircraft? No, they don't have. That is also very interesting. Aircraft is also a product of curiosity-driven basic scientific research, right? It's coming all the way from uh, artist, you know, the Leonardo da Vinci, the Italian painter, who conceived the idea of the ornithopter, the imagination, right? The Wright brothers is the one who actually uh, you know, the, uh, they manufactured, right? They, they constructed this aircraft in the backyard. So by the way, this mask in the aircraft, it produces the oxygen by a chemical reaction. They have just two powder and they just mix up the moment of the oxygen is, uh, you know, or the, the moment the oxygen level decreases. So it is kind of an explosion. And uh, it's basically sodium chlorate and potassium perchlorate these two powder, this, they get mixed up. Uh, so it, it start kind of a small explosion, isn't it? It's oxidation. So it generate the oxygen gas. So that is how, so I, I learned it. It's very interesting, isn't it? And deep fibrillator, you know, though uh, you might have seen that like the people who are collapsed, uh, you know, because of the cardiac failure, uh, myocardial infarction, right? The, the heart attacks. So they, you can save their life if you have the defibrillator. So defibrillator machines or uh, automatic defibrillators do save a lot of life. And if you're at your workplace, so, you know, campaign to install at least one such unit in your workplace that can really save a lot of life. So earlier I used to think that, okay, defibrillator is kind of, uh, they uh, make the the life, uh, I mean, the, the stopped heart functional, isn't it? They actually, of course, they release a lot of electric shock. That is how it works. But I learned that that is not how it actually works. It doesn't restart the stopped heart, you know? So in fact, the, the quite the opposite is true, that it actually stops the heart in the middle of the cardiac event like uh, uh, arrhythmia or uh, myocardial infarction and allowing the heart to uh, take over the natural backup mechanism, you know? So in ter whenever the heart is completely stopped, then heart takes back, it start beating again. So that is how the defibrillators work. Exciting, isn't it? So now let us come, uh, uh, you know, the uh, to the discoveries of the last month. That is in July, what really moved the sciences, that is paradigm shifts. First is psychology and behavior related stories. So scientists have found that three consecutive nights of sleeplessness, the loss of sleep, can have negative impact on both mental and physical health. You know that's really important to get a good night's sleep the number one productivity sleep uh, tip you see so sleep deprivation can lead to an increasing anger frustration and anxiety that is what the, the latest study found and spanking you know spanking the children you're beating the children uh, to, to import the i mean to punish the bad behavior that's really bad another study revealed it so it does a lot of harm but nothing good at all so if you, you know that kind of corporeal punishment we should rather stop it so that used to be the case in middle ages right corporeal punishment even today many countries they do practice spanking and canning you know so some middle east countries do that it's really bad it doesn't actually do any positive message to society as well and teens around the world are now lonelier than a decade ago so that is, uh, could be the, the reason can be imparted to the smartphone, you know, so extreme smartphone use could be the reason and especially the social media, they're pretty lonely, you know. And new study shows that the preschool children struggle when the adults tell them the, with the conflict, uh, you know, how to uh, resolve the conflict. So if they are actually resolving conflict themselves, it's so much better. But if the parental intervention in the school conflicts 
lead to more harm you know so that is really it's it's, it's pretty revealing right so if you're a parent if the kids have some conflict at their home just leave it them to solve it that is much better because we apply the adults psychological and adults mentality to the children's curiosity driven uh, psychological landscape that actually leads to much more trouble than positive sides a study suggests that the conservativism is associated with lesser ability to distinguish between uh, the true and false claims in the wide range of political issues so that means the fake news detection is uh, poorer if you are a conservative so that's pretty revealing we have covered this topic again and again in curiosity in earlier episodes you know fake news and infodemic uh, more dangerous right the conspiracy theories and uh, hoaxes right so and it it has got a political dimension too so if you are a conservative so chances are high that you should uh, you know you should protect yourself from the fake news by uh, doing something called cognitive immunization again covered in the past episode of the curiosity and new study found that conspiracy theory believers have less developed critical thinking abilities so you know the critical thinking is really important so that actually uh, highlights the importance of uh teaching our kids critical thinking you know to be aware of cognitive biases and logical fallacies and other mental heuristics and psychological effects so i'm writing the book on the exact same topic you now a new study in canada with uh, approximately 2000 cohorts finds that two thirds of romantic couples start out as friends you know so the so friends are leading to the the uh, later turns out to be a romance no romantic couple so fantastic isn't it the study coming to humanities and politics policies and arts related stories escort services and strip clubs don't increase sex crimes that is one of the you know highly cited study in the last month so uh, you know the legalization of prostitution doesn't actually lead to increased sex crime just the opposite you know so that actually uh, of, if you look at the netherlands as a classic example you know Uh, of course the prostitution is legal there so as drugs you know the soft drugs are legal do they have any drug problem or sex crimes no they don't have so as other countries were this has been legalized so as well as the states in the us some states have legalized the drugs they don't have the drug problem so it might be due to the uh, you know the psychological uh, uh, you know a phenomenon called reactance so what is that like prohibition or censorship usually backfires if you prohibit something so people are uh, tend to do that again and again so these are unintentional psychological arousal and motivation in response to threatened freedom so when the th- freedom is threatened so they take the revenge like again the parental you know if you are a parent if you are too strict the kids are tend to be rule breakers yes the phenomenon is known as a reactance you know so that is very interesting so new research suggests that significant relationships between open office plan where there are no boundaries you know uh, the noise and physiological stress so that means the increased negative mood and human sweat if uh, the office space is open office open office means all the employers uh, are in the same room uh, without any uh, you know walls and not much privacy so people a lot of noise right so that kind of noisy surroundings lead to more mental stress so if or you are into designing a new workplace so keep this in your mind so if you really want to reduce the psychological stress of employees of course you should so you should design uh, you know uh, isolated spaces uh, or the office you know traditional office is much better than open office you know yes now coming to technology and physics related stories researchers developed self healing cement Uh, the paste is inspired by the process of carbon dioxide transport in biological cells you know in biological cells there is an enzyme called carbon uh, you know a carbonic anhydrase enzyme so that actually captures the carbon dioxide and it converts into the useful forms you know chemical forms of the co2 right uh, carbon so it it's very interesting there is a self healing cement so if there is a crack it can heal it because it has got this carbonic and hydrase enzyme so by the way the enzyme is something like a, a catalyst it doesn't degrade 
so you know it doesn't get consumed it can catalyze the same reaction again and again here the carbonic anhydrase catalyzes the reaction between calcium 2 plus ion in the cement that is basically the uh, gypsum and other calcium uh, compound in the cement and atmospheric co2 so that creates a calcium carbonate crystals that strengthens the cement exciting isn't it just check out the show notes of this video right below the the youtube you can access all these stories okay and ganymede ganymede is a moon uh, you know it's a jupiter's largest uh, natural satellite also called moon so it has got water vapor now confirmed water vapor in ganymede and it's of course it has got its own magnetic field and aurora that we knew it already you know but now latest research says that it has got water vapor exciting story isn't it and uh, now coming next is biodiversity environment and evolution related stories uh, there is alarming evidence of a climate change ever accumulating now nowadays in india also and rest of the world germany we have seen that right uh, you know uh, central germany near the swiss border right uh, the floods so as the western side of india everywhere the floods are oh it's alarming Right? It has devastated human lives like anything, like in Goa, for example, or in uh, Chiplun in uh, uh, Maharashtra. Right? So now that we are nearing the tipping point, that is what the latest studies say, that uh, you know the uh, 1.5 degrees Celsius increase, the global surface mean temperature over the next five years. That is really alarming. 1.5 degrees Celsius in the next five years. Look at that impact. The Antarctica can completely collapse with that, you know. So, uh, with that, uh, the next story is from my own lab here in Punjab in, in Batinda. You know, we discovered a, a new species of Antarctic moss called Brayam Bharatiense. The discovery, of course, the collection happened five years ago in 2017, but it took a lot of time to get it published, you know. So, it is meticulous, the data. And the, the beauty of this discovery is that this is the first ever plant species discovery in the last 40 years of Indian Antarctic mission. It has reported widely across international media, including BBC and Independence and other media across the Europe and rest of the world. And, uh, and of course, it always, uh, you know, motivates me to see like, it's extremophile, of course, the environment is really extreme, right? Like Ganymede, just uh, told you, the moon of Jupiter and Europa or Titan or other, like Mars, extraterrestrial life. It's really extreme, the environment in uh, Antarctica. How could it survive? So, yes, so chances are high that it actually goes into the dormant stage during Antarctic winter, six months of no sunlight at all, you know? And meters of... Uh, the snow on the top of this moss more and also moss need nitrogen and phosphorus and where does it comes from so you know the evidence suggests that the moss in Antarctica gets nitrogen from uh, you know the, the poop of penguin you know the, the excrements of penguin do contain the nitrogen so if you look at the isotop ratio n15 versus n14 you will see that the n is basically the higher uh, you know the heavier isotope of nitrogen n15 so that means that it's getting the nitrogen from penguin penguin poop you know so that study published uh, last month our team and uh, yes so another very interesting study published by ohio university team in tibetan ice glaciers 15,000 years old viruses have been discovered in the glaciers in the Tibet by the team from Ohio University. So that shows that the climate change catastrophe uh, could lead to, uh, you know, the COVID-19 and other infectious, emerging infectious diseases. It can re-emerge the pathogens in the ice and uh, glaciers, isn't it? And other stories include just 5% of the world's power plants account for almost three quarters of the carbon emissions from the electricity generation. So that we have to target that 5% of the coal and, uh, you know, the fossil energy based electric unit, the, the power generator and power plants in the world. This asymmetric distribution always fascinates me. 
If you read the books of Nick, uh, Nassim Taleb, you will see that uh, black swan and asymmetry. Uh, it's really interesting that, you know, so uh, look, coming again, another story last month is a Spanish study that shows that 50 percentage of the microplastics in the ocean are coming from just one source. Take away food and drinks uh, litter, the rubbish from the take away food and take away drinks like uh, Zomato, Swiki. I would do order sometimes, you know, once in a month or so. Uh, you know, these are popular uh, brands here in India, not uh, Swiggy and uh, Tomato, uh, Zomato, not Tomato. Uh, they do have this takeaway uh, container. I just repurpose it as, uh, you know, for my gardening. But if you throw out this one, it eventually ends up in ocean. And this is the study. 50% of microplastics are coming from takeaway food and drinks. So beware of it. So if you reduce just one habit, do not order from these takeaway sources, you can contribute immensely on the microplastic pollution, friends. This asymmetry is interesting, you know. So not every sources are equally condemnable. So one example would be trucks. Uh, I recently learned that almost 50% of the carbon emission in the vehicles, uh, transport industry coming from the trucks alone. So if you can electrify the trucks, 50% of problem solved, the emission problem. And of course, electrification, the, the, it's a double-edged sword. It's, of course, if you're taking electricity from the grid, uh, the question is that where the grid coming from, if it's from the fossil and coal, uh, I mean the coal or uh, diesel, then it doesn't actually lead to anywhere. But yes, 50% of the uh, carbon emission in the uh, transport sector coming from the trucks alone. And also, of course, you know, uh, the discussion is never ending. If you look at the wealth distribution in the planet Earth, you know, one percentage of the richest people contribute to 99 percentage of the wealth. And again, like the top most hundred percent in the world could contribute to more than 95 percentage of the all over the wealth. So it's it's talking the revelations are, isn't it? Asymmetry. So uh, another study uh, finds that the microbes in the cow's gut can break down three types of plastic serving as a sustainable method of recycling plastic waste. Of course, we have to take out the microbes culture and further studies are needed. It's only in the in vitro studies. But again, you know, we have covered this topic again and again, plastic degrading microbes. But unfortunately, all these studies are, uh, you know, in the, in the lab only. It needs to get out of the lab right it needs to scale the scalability concern is very important right unless the discovery is scalable to higher dimension it doesn't actually uh, matters anything right so we have to see it doesn't mean that you can feed the cows with the plastic no please never do that it's heart-wrenching this kind of scenes that i i seen that again and again the cows are eating the plastic uh, you know the the the, plus, the, the, the rubbish uh, and the pl plastic, uh, uh, you know, the, the bag, shopping bags. So that actually does a lot of harm. Uh, you know, the cows, uh, I mean, it actually blocks its elementary canal and it can uh, lead to the death of the cows. So beware of it. And cleaner air in the United States have boosted the US corn and soybean yields, you know, 20 percentage increase. So clean air is really important. Another study is about the cauliflowers. You know, the cauliflowers, you see that it's big it's a failed flower you see the inflorescence is because of a mathematical principle called fractals so that is what the latest study says right? so uh, the, it's fractal because these are failed flowers so by the way fractals are like never ending mathematical patterns you can see it in ice uh, the snow crystals you know or any of these kind of uh, i mean uh, if you look at the flowers or these sort of patterns in which the whole you can see in in parts if you magnify the part you will see the whole again again you you magnify so it is like in different different stages the fractals could be very interesting fractals i love fractals next is medicine health and diagnostics and nutrition related stories a new study by the researchers on 82,000 participants has shown the difficulty hearing the spoken words in the conversation is associated to up to 91 percentage increased risk of dementia so it is uh, you know it is actually a symptom of dementia if you have trouble identifying spoken words the conversation you know 
Next is animal proteins are better for muscle building rather than vegetable protein. That is a meta-analysis I've found out. By the way, uh, well, I'm not a, uh, you know, meat eater. I used to eat, but now I'm a vegetarian. Uh, not a good news if you're a vegetarian, right? But of course, vegetarianism is good for the planet Earth, you know? So in terms of carbon footprint, plants are so much better for the planet Earth. So it is um, unambiguous. But if you are into bodybuilding, then animal proteins must be good for you. COVID-19 antibodies can persist at least nine months after the infection. 98.8 percentage of the people infected in, during the February, March last year showed detectable levels of antibodies in November last year. This is in 2000, you know. So there was no difference between the people who had suffered symptoms of COVID-19 and those who were symptom free, asymptomatic carriers or with the symptom. Both had same level of antibody, which is quite a good news, isn't it? Scientists have found that almost a quarter of the allied uh, adult rugby players have brain structure abnormalities result of the repeated head impacts. You know, so 50 percentage uh, have uh, unexpected reduction in the brain volume. So this kind of uh, team sports have uh, association with brain injury so you know it is risky there is a risk associated with the rugby and boxing also you know so all these sports now that's it for the last month's stories now coming to observances you know the general observances uh, by the way i have this uh, notebook so i always put these observances in the notebook so this is my august spread you know a little bit of you know the uh, uh, what is the illustration and each month when I start, I actually put up the observances, general observance and astronomical. I don't miss any of the astronomical observances. I have a small camera, point and shoot. I go to the, uh, the terrace and I click. I document all this, uh, you know, as part of the uh, citizen science initiative, right? I love sky watching. So first is general observances of August. Ninth is Indigenous Peoples Day. 12th of August is Youth Day. 15th is, you know, it's an Independence Day, the uh, Indian Independence Day, you know, so that we celebrate. I'm looking forward to it, 15th August, yes. 19th is Humanitarian Day. 22 is International Day for commemorating victims of acts of violence based on religion or belief. It's a UN uh, observance, you know, 22nd. You know, so the religion and belief lead to more than uh, uh, three-fourths of the violence around the world, wars and violence. So beware of it. So belief, you know, the hardcore belief. So we, you can change it. You can change your belief. That is how the purpose of the education, purpose of critical thinking, you know. 29th is International Day Against Nuclear Tests. 29th of August. And 31st, the last day of this month is International Day for the People of African Descent. So African Descent, I do have a lot of friends in Africa, right? And of course, Africa is where, it's a crucible of humanity, right? We all originated in uh, Western Africa, right? Earlier, we used to think that it's in Eastern Africa, but it's in Western Africa now. So Africa matters, though Africa remains the poorest, right? So 31st is a day for Africa. And uh, observance uh, related to astronomy, all these observances are binocular events, you know, uh, of course, naked eye or binocular. I don't expect any of you to have a telescope. Of course, having a telescope is always a good asset. You know, it's uh, second best way to spend your money, right? First best way is on invest on learning. So that means on books and uh, yeah, telescope or photography, the, the nice camera is always good. So these are all binocular. If you have a small binocular, you can see it all, right? First, that is today is Saturn at opposition. I'm looking forward to it. Tonight I will go upstairs. This is the best day of the year, friends, to photograph the Saturn. Saturn is at the opposition, you know, the best day. 11th of this month is Moon-Venus conjunction. So conjun conjunction means that they are pretty close, you know, so it comes in the same frame, Moon and Venus. 12th of August is Perseidus meteor shower. 14th is M15. 18th is Kappa Signet meteor shower. 20th is Jupiter at the opposition. 21st is Moon Saturn 
conjunction that is you can see that moon and saturn and 22nd is moon sturgeon uh, you know it's a full moon day it's also known as sturgeon moon plus moon jupiter conjunction so there are two conjunctions here uh, you know uh, moon saturn conjunction moon jupiter so moon jupiter conjunction and then moon venus conjunction too right so moon venus is on 11th of august and uh, this month you can see two planets fantastically the best time jupiter at the opposition that is on 20th of this month never miss it don't miss it and today is saturn so 20th is the best day of the whole year to photograph jupiter and today that is uh, august 1st is the best day to photograph uh, the saturn right best wishes for you all now opportunity the last session is opportunities we have a, a plenty of opportunities including uh, kishon Kishore Vaigyanik uh, uh, Prayojan Yojana that is KVPY fellowship for the uh, plus two students you know you can apply for it and you can go to the ICER and other institute for uh, BSMS program so KVPY is a very prestigious you can apply and EMBO DBT leadership course is there if you are a young uh, you know scientist you would like to or a researcher or even a PhD student you can apply for it NIH funds are the BRAC Indo-Australian uh, Merck program, ICSSR doctoral fellowship and several junior research fellowships and postdocs are open you know so uh, do check out our links up so links are in the curiosities or show notes so you can check out and uh, you know it will lead to this particular page you can see that uh, you know you can see uh, all these programs here right so you know so JR officer McCall Johnson I mean, there are 40, uh, 40, 48 uh, different uh, programs of the BRAX, Young Scientist Conclave, you can apply for it, or uh, Water Challenge, and the several postdoc and several junior research fellowship uh, things are there. Uh, UN, uh, you know, Environmental Chemical Waste Management Program, for example, or DBT Welcome Trust, Alliance Call for the Applications for EMBO, a Lab Leadership Course, so please do apply if you would like to, or Elephant Conservation Research Funding Support, if you would like to work on Elephant Conservation. Very exciting, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, so check out uh, this show notes in the, uh, you know, in, uh, in, the, in the show notes for this, the, the links. And yeah, so that's it for this month's episode of the Curiosity. And we do have a Facebook page, you know, Young Academy of India's Facebook page. You can just search out YAI, Young Academy of India, where we actually put a lot of exciting curiosity driven research news by our volunteers. Our, uh, we have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, the, co the moderators of the page and uh, they do that diligently. They update different uh, posts. So do subscribe to our page okay and link is again in the in the show notes so check it out and of course uh, yeah so uh, do check out the young academy you can be a member of our academy it's completely free right and uh, uh, yes i'm fully vaccinated but i still do wear masks so please do wear masks even if you are fully vaccinated especially in the indoor and in uh, public places right and the, we don't have any change in our mask guidelines do trust in science science to work friends and that's it for uh, this month's episode and my best wishes throughout the month of August. Let August be really productive for you all. And I will see you all in the September episode. And till then, please take care of yourself and do take care of someone else too if you can. Goodbye.